In this example, we'll compare an analytical solution to a numerical solution for a batch first order chemical reaction in a closed constant volume vessel. Our model equation describing the concentration of A as a function of time is a dynamic first order linear ordinary differential equation. The concentration of CA changes with respect to time according to the rate law describing the chemical reaction, which we've said here is a first order reaction minus kCa. In order to solve an ordinary differential equation, you know that we need an initial condition. So we'll choose an initial condition for the initial amount of Ca in the solution, and we'll choose a parameter, the rate coefficient k, as 0.2 reciprocal minutes. You know how to find the analytical solution to this problem. The concentration of A at any time t is simply the initial concentration multiplied by this exponential. To find our numerical solution, we'll compute Ca at t at one minute intervals for the first 10 minutes using a first order Taylor series for to approximate how Ca changes with time. We'll start with the initial amount of A in the reactor at t equals zero and we'll approximate the value at t equals one minute using the Taylor series. Then we'll use the result at one minute and again use the Taylor series to approximate the result at two minutes. We'll use the result at two minutes to again approximate the solution at three minutes and so on. This example is shown in the notes. Here we've tabulated the analytical solution and the numerical solution and we've also plotted them. As you can see at t equals zero the analytical solution and the numerical solution exactly match but at t equals one minute they're not the same. The numerical solution has a slight error. As the independent variable time increases that error becomes larger because we're accumulating error at each approximate step. Later on in the class, we'll learn different strategies that we could use to improve this approximation. Next, we'll consider dimensionless solutions and contrast them with dimensional solutions. Making models equations dimensionless is a very powerful technique for generalizing solutions. Consider the previous example. I've gone back a few slides to again show you our analytical solution. Remember that when we found this solution, we have an equation. This equation predicts CA for any value of time, for any value of CA0, and for any value of K. When we wrote this analytical solution, we didn't plug any of the numbers in from our problem statement. In fact, this is a habit that you should adopt. Retain the symbols representing the numbers for as long as possible, and don't plug any numbers in until you absolutely need them. Because this solution is already general. In fact, this is the solution for any CA0 and for any K, at any positive time. Now we want to know how the system behaves for different sets of parameters and initial conditions. Cases one and three here have the same initial condition but different values for the rate coefficient and cases one and two have the same rate coefficient but different values for the initial condition. We don't have to solve the model again because we already have an analytical solution that's exact for any values of CA0 and any values of K. But by making the solutions dimensionless, we'll see more clearly how this is a general solution. So if we want to find the dimensional solutions, we could solve the model three times or as many other times as necessary. In this case, that would simply mean plugging CA0 and K into our analytical solution and finding values of CA at desired values of time. If we do that, we can plot the solution and it looks something like this. We have three different cases representing different combinations of CA0 and K for the first 10 minutes. The dimensionless solution is obtained by making the equation dimensionless and in this case it results in a single master curve. To make the equation dimensionless we'll divide both the right hand side and the left hand side by CA0. If we do that, we'll get concentration divided by concentration on the left-hand side. We'll call that the dimensionless concentration using the Greek letter chi with subscript A. We'll also make the time dimensionless by defining the parameter theta, which is the product of the reaction rate coefficient and time, kT. Our solution now becomes chi A equals e to the minus theta, where chi A, e, and theta are all dimensionless. When we plot any of our three solutions, they all fall on a single master curve. 
Because we've collapsed all the solutions to one master curve, we can now see how any first order reaction will behave in any batch reactor with any rate coefficient. The concentration as a function of time will evolve according to this curve. Whenever possible, you should look for opportunities to generalize your solutions so that you can apply them to as many situations as might be necessary. 